this Hunter versus Rogue matchup. And we'll have to see draws, you know, becoming so, so huge right. in this tournament. And to be fair, although you see almost only Miracle Rogue on the, on the ladder, uh, we haven't really seen any Miracle Rogues doing that well so far this tournament. Yeah, it, something to be said about it is on ladder, you're at liberty to play as many games as you want. Yep. So when, when you go on a big losing streak, you can just make that up by investing more time. Yep. So when you go into a tournament like this, though, Miracle Rogue is a very do or die deck. I still yep. think it's important to have it in your lineup because it's so powerful, but it's also vulnerable to the deck choices of your opponent. Your opponent can counter it. And one small loss from it, that can snowball the whole tournament just on the back of something as simple as just not drawing an auctioneer. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and now we're just going to decide to end the turn. So he's going to be accepting to take uh, at least three damage here from this, uh, from this board. And he's going to have to next turn unless he wants to coin SI. He could do that as well. I do believe he has the SI in his hand. He does. Um, now, I mean, coin SI seems like a pretty reasonable choice here just even to get something out on the board. Right. Um, so I think he is just going to decide to do that. And yeah, makes a lot of sense. I mean, to, you know, obviously the, the battle cry, not, like, or the combo, I should call it rather. Not the best use on the board, but still, you know, getting that 3-3 three, three out there is, is relatively important. I want to touch on the fact that Kit Kat's kept Blood Mage in the middle here. Okay. And I think one of the reasons he kept it is to have additional ways to deal with Savannah Hyman when we get to that stage of the game. Yeah. A lot of this game comes down to trading one. Oh my gosh, that's a huge draw, Ooh, though. The auctioneer, man. That's going to change the way this game pans out a lot. And, and he's kinda, probably pretty sad that he, ha he drew the... the, the yeah. Leoric yeah. is uh, not... I always call it Leoric for some reason. Yeah, it, I don't know why. It's just because Leoric from Warcraft. Oh, it's yeah. so easy. They're very similar names. Yep. He's, he's like Leoric. He's, he dies all the time. That's true. Yeah. Sometimes um, he comes back to life. On the by the way, the that, that was terrible. Terrible luck there for, for you know for Nymphs when we talk about how good his luck is. And I mean, the Misha would have been way better. The Huffer would have been way better. That was definitely the one that the guy gets removed right. from free. And he still has this 3-1 that he has to deal with. And I mean... You talked about kind of the annoyance of these small minions sometimes. It's like, there's just, how do you deal with it? Do you put down a Timberwolf? Do you friggin' silence it and put it out there? Either one of those can just get poked by the dagger. Do you put your scavenging high even down? And I mean, he may even be forced into doing that, but no matter what he does, it's all not really desirable traits. Right, this is reflective of how this matchup pans out. Yeah. Rogue is a very heavy disruption deck, and this mid-range hunter is a synergy-based deck. It relies on your opponent not being able to answer everything efficiently and then using that efficiency to really clean up. The, oh my gosh, an Earthwing Farce here's wow. a good draw. So he's not fearful of something like traps here. I'm, is he going to use the poison? He's going to use the poison. Yeah, definitely. I, find that I actually, I actually would have liked to see Earthwing Farce here heal. Yeah, it would have, would have been an interesting choice this way. Obviously, he's holding on to that. Maybe he wants to use it later uh, for a conjunction with Shadow Staff, something right. like that. Maybe he's you know worried about some sort of combo. He wants to be able to hold on to that. Um, we'll see what he's going to go for. But I mean, even you know, had he drawn a backstab, it would have been even worse. He could have backstabbed right. that for free. That would have been pretty rough. Uh, he's going to be able to taunt this up. But now he can trade that in as well. And he oh does have a backstab. Gosh. So this is a huge turn now for Kit Kats. This isn't even really a matter yeah, of... Yeah, with the Blood Mage. That's so brutal. Right. This isn't even a matter of how you play this turn. It's a matter of... Like, or, or rather, it's not a matter of if you can play this turn right. It's like, well, how do you do it? Mm. You have the choice between Auctioneer, Preparation, and Eviscerate. You have the choice between Blood Mage and Backstab. Yeah. You have, and you'll follow that up with an Earthling and Farseer. You, you have so many plays at your disposal. This is where you start to see a lot of true players shine as well as when they're kind of overloaded with Good a number of, of well <laughs> options. They put themselves, they use the worst combinations of these cards to make the most of it. So now, this game, I think, largely going to be decided on the fact that this auctioneer is in hand. So he's going to get it, be able to get an almost insurmountable amount oh, of, of card advantage. But it's sort of, again, a testament to, to uh, how these players work. They want to press for their advantage. And he's making the most out of a position where he can absolutely make the most out of it. So I like cycling the backstab here. Because you just want to dig deeper in your deck. Shadow Step's a pretty critical card right now with this Earth and Ring Farce here. And the Leroy, Leroy Jenkins Speaking obviously of a very critical, critical card. Cards. And he wants to just hunt for more like stuff like SI7 Agents. Blade Flurry obviously is going to help take out this board. And now, when you're in Nimsha's spot, you still have to deal with this Auctioneer, but your opponent's just on three cards from it. Yeah, and he doesn't know, but he has another one in hand. Right. And I mean, oh my gosh, a pair of really unlucky draws. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a brutal hand for Nimsha. And I mean, this is this is the the, the the time when you're playing against this Miracle Rogue where you start to feel a little bit sick. When right. you're like, you're like, I'm <laughs> at 27 HP, but I've lost. How am I? Yeah, th this game is basically over yeah. at this point. Again, an almost insurmountable amount of card advantage coming out from Kit Kats here. The gods have certainly forsaken Nimsh in this game. He's mm -hmm. not going to find the lucky needs. And this isn't even a matter of of if Kit Kats is going to win. It's just a matter of time at this point. It, he doesn't have lethal quite yet, but look at his hand. He's, got, he's able to heal up more. He still hasn't seen a Shadow Step. The Shadow Steps are going to give him lethal options or healing up options. 
He just, he's got everything at his disposal and Nimsh wasn't able to put together any pieces this game on the back of the disruption power from Rogue. Now, do you just like attacking with the 4-4, playing your second uh, Auctioneer and then concealing and just trying to wait for some more, uh, some more draws? You know, you want that extra Shadow Step, you have Cold Bloods, things like that. So you're just trying to dig deeper. You know, you have the two four fours. Do you, do you bother trading here to deny the five damage kill command, things like that? Or do you just go face with the 4-4, play the Auctioneer, conceal? Or, I mean, obviously there's other things you can do as well. I mean, you can, um, do Blood Mage Abyss, you can do Blood Mage Blade Flurry Abyss, you can just start going in the face like that. I mean, how do you play this? Do you feel like you need to get the Auctioneer down and get those card draws from your spells? Or I do you just go start going ham at this I point? certainly am going to play Auctioneer Conceal, and yeah. I think his decision coming into it is whether or not he wants to pay two life, or whether or not he wants to use two health of his minion. And okay. for, I would tend to go with the minion here, because you, again, just have so many options at your disposal that it almost doesn't matter what, what you do, you just have to make sure you don't die, and you'll win the game just because you have so much card advantage. Either way, he is uh, he's going to decide to actually conceal, and looking like he may actually not even use his weapon. So wow. Right. Okay, so he's just going to leave that up there. Now, do you think that poses much risk? I mean, kill command comes out, doesn't really matter. He obviously can can Leroy, uh, you know, six eight, and he has thirteen damage, but it's not going to be enough. And he's just going to kill command the face. This is going to put him in a, in a much more scary position, and it's because he didn't kill that owl off. To be fair, so now. You know, he is, in a, he is in a situation where he'd easily be lethal next turn, so he has to win this turn now. So do you feel that was just too greedy leaving the owl up? Because I kind of did. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit greedy to leave the owl up, but Leroy is a little bit unlikely this turn. I'm pretty sure he's got lethal also. This is 8, yeah. 10, 14. This, he's Blade Flurry, the second double deadly poison. Yeah, yeah so this, this was just lethal coming yeah. into it, almost kind of regardless of how you spell it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here's the Abyss. And Especially on the back of that preparation. Yeah. Yep, that should do it. Uh, he has the Abyss to finish it off. That's going to put him 4 HP. And he is Oh, yeah, he didn't up. actually, he didn't even need the preparation because yeah. he just attack with the weapon. Duh. <laughs> so, yeah, his play here, I don't think it's greedy because he understands that he puts himself in a position to set up for a two turn lethal, but he knew he had the one turn lethal. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, when he finds the, the right spot, he knows he's going to be able to push through it no matter what. And that's what he's thinking about in that position. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, Nibs can get a taunt on the board, but he can just, he can easily push through the taunt. And he has Earthen Ring Farseer to heal himself back up. 